Jewish tradition attributes the authorship of the book of Ezra to the scribe and scholar Ezra. Now, let's put some historical context around our lesson. Israel had been captured, their king dethroned, and the people had been exiled to Babylon. The book of Ezra accounts for the first return of Jews from captivity in Babylon, led by Zerubbabel. Now, our lesson is the second group of exiles returning to Israel, led by Ezra. Ezra's return, that is studied in our lesson, is about 60 years after the first group had returned. Artaxerxes is the king of Persia. Now, Persia has replaced Babylon as Israel's captor. Artaxerxes grants permission to Ezra to return to a rather demoralized Israel. This means that Ezra is returning with the governmental authority from the king as well as religious authority. Because of his Levitical lineage, Ezra has a special status. Ezra was in fact the direct descendant of Aaron. Now Aaron was the chief priest, the oldest brother of Moses, Moses' assistant during the time of bondage. He was the first of the Levitical or Aaronic priesthood. Ezra's lineage gives him a religious status, but in and of himself, Ezra was a well-studied priest and scribe. And let's remember, scribes were pastors who had learned they could interpret, copy, and teach the law of Moses. Jewish law, like modern law, encapsulizes the history the cultural and religious traditions, the religious fundamentals of Judaism. Ezra left for Jerusalem with about 2,000 men along with women and children. These people were seeking to use their time, talent, and training to teach and reestablish the law and traditions to a demoralized people. His entourage included priests and Levites, musicians, gatekeepers, and temple servants. These were the people needed to re-establish worship and teach the law. With over 2,000 people traveling in this entourage, this was an arduous trip that required planning and supplies. The trip took four months. They left Babylon in April and arrived in Jerusalem in August, a trip of about 900 miles. The king had granted Ezra silver and gold and all that he had requested, believing that the hand of the Lord was upon him. And in fact, it was because they made it to Jerusalem because of God. This lesson shows us that God often prepares us for his work long before we are called to duty. Ezra had set his heart on studying the word, putting what he learned into practice in his own life and teaching it to others. All of these things are connected to God's promise of blessings. Because Ezra had made the word of God a priority in his life, God made Ezra's life a priority. The same is applied to modern Christians. Now, recall here, King Artaxerxes is a monarch over the Persian Empire, and yet he respects or fears the God of Israel so much that he lets Ezra leave to teach Jewish law. He lets any Israelite with the desire to return go with him, and he provides support for this massive undertaking. Ezra has governmental authority, but the king limits it. Artaxerxes decrees that those who serve in the temple were not to have their income taxed. The king decrees that Ezra is to appoint magistrates and judges to govern everyone once they get west of the Euphrates River. Now, the Euphrates River is near the western border. In other words, Ezra was to set up a police force and judicial system. Israel was respected by even nations that were against them because they were known as the people of the book, meaning they had written laws and traditions that were standardized and not subject to the whims of man. Ezra was carrying a copy of God's law which outlined what justice was, 
how it was to be administered and who qualified to be in those positions of authority. The king wants Ezra to follow Jewish law. Anyone who did not know God's law had to be educated, but those who knew and chose not to follow were subject to death, banishment, fines, or jail. In essence, Ezra has the vision, the authority, the financial support, the legal teaching, and the administrative skills. God has provided Ezra everything he needs to accomplish his mission. Now, he must do it. That's the lesson for this week. Have a great week. Bye.